positive integers are very easy to represent in binary. And recall, a positive integer, integer is just an unsigned integer. So an integer that can be both positive and negative is known as a signed integer. So we need to be wary because there's various formats that we use to represent uh, negative integers in binary. So in sign magnitude format, the most significant bit, so that's the one uh, furthest left, is used to represent the sign. So we use zero to represent a positive number and one to represent a negative number. So this is just the same as we're writing um, three, for example, the positive one you might put plus three in front of it, or you're writing a negative, you'll do minus three. So we're just using a zero to represent positive and a one to represent a negative number. Now the remaining bits of this that represent the magnitude of the number, we're just doing the same way as we've done for unsigned integers. So in this case, so three, we know in binary, three is just zero, one, one. So you just stick it, if it's positive, you just stick a zero in front of it. And if it's negative, you just put a one in front of it. So that's just like writing it out like this. So plus three, minus three. So just use that sign bit just to represent uh, which sign the number is. But the magnitude bit, is the same for each. So from that unsigned numbers, we've seen the range is going by zero up to two to the n minus one. So it's after four bits, we can store numbers from zero up to uh, 15. But because in sign magnitude numbers, we use one of the bits to store the sign. So it means we've actually got less bits um, available to store the magnitude. So the range is actually uh, less. So we've got minus two to the n minus one is the smallest. Sorry, plus one. Up to two to the n minus one, minus one. So for four bits, Turns out we can store numbers in the range minus seven up to plus seven. So rather than zero to fifteen, that's kind of been shifted down. And now we can just we can't even though we can't go up to fifteen, but we've we've got some negative numbers instead, so we can go from minus seven to plus seven. So there's actually two ways you've got to be aware in this in this method, because there's two ways to represent zero. So in this case our magnitude bit stuff just gives us zero. And we, you know, we know the concepts of plus zero, minus zero doesn't really make, you know, it's not really a valid concept. So we've actually got two ways here to represent zero. So another method is called one's complement. So in this, in this, using one's complement, positive numbers are represented in the same way as for sign magnitude numbers. So we've got zero for a sign bit. So, you know, the zero sign bit just tells us that it's positive. And then we just use the remaining bits to create the magnitude. But negative numbers, we've got a sign bit as one, just as we did before. So if the sign bit's one, we know it's a negative number. But now the remaining magnitude bits are given by the complement of the magnitude bits as the corresponding positive value. So essentially the complement just means that the magnitude bits are inversed. So look for the case before. So this is for a positive number, so for positive three, we know since that's positive, the sign bit is just going to be zero, and then the remit, the magnitude bits are just the same as they were before, so that gives us a three. But for the case, um, when it's a negative, so for this example, when we're doing negative three, so the sign bit is just going to be one to tell us that it's negative. But now we're just inverted. So we've got the complements, we just inverted these numbers. So before we had zero, one, one. So we just invert each one of these. So zero, zero, one, one would be positive three. And then one, one, zero, zero would be negative three. So again, the range is um, the same as it was for the sign magnitude. We can go from minus seven up to plus seven. And again, we've got two representations for zero. So we've now got 
to um, positive zero, if you will, to a negative zero. So that's one, 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 which is what we've got this. Um, one for the negative sign bit, and then we just inverted three zeros to give us the three ones. So the fact that we have two representations for zero isn't ideal. So there's actually a different uh, method of representing sign numbers called two's complement. Let's get rid of that. We only have one representation for zero. So now positive numbers are represented in the same way as we did for sign magnitude and one's complement. So we just uh, have a zero for a sign bit, and then the magnitude is just given by the normal binary representation. Negative numbers have a sign bit of one, as we did before. So now the magnitude bits are the complement of a positive value, like one's complement, plus one. So this is what makes it two's complement. So two's complement is the same as one's complement, plus one. So for the, the example we've seen before, plus three is just the same. Positive number, so we know that the zero sign bit tells us it's positive. And there are three magnitude bits. So we use that to store the magnitude of zero, one, one for three. So now for, for negative three, We've got the zero, uh, so we've got the one for the negative sign bit. And now, so we need to invert these plus one. So we can invert zero, one, one. And so we can invert that plus one to one, zero, zero. So that's kind of our intermediate value. And we know you add one onto this, and that will give us the values here. So got the one for the negative sign bit, and then the magnitude bits are the two's complement of this positive value here. So invert the numbers, invert each bit, and add one to it. So now, because we've only got one way to represent the zero, we're not wasting one of these kind of binary combinations, if you will. So our range has actually gone. Uh, you know the maximum, sorry, the minimum negative number we can represent has now dropped to minus eight. So before it was minus seven up to plus seven, but now it's minus eight up to plus seven. So now we've only got one way to represent zero. But doing two's complement, you know, it's not too difficult, but there's a very nice shortcut to convert two's complement number to a decimal. So we just treat the most significant bit, so the ones on the very left will just have a, ne a negative weight. So normally this this column here would just say that, that this is worth um, eight positive eight, but for a two's complement number, we just that last column, so the most significant this down to the most significant bit, has just got negative weight. So in this case, it's just worth minus eight. So in this for this example here, we've got minus eight plus four plus one gives us minus three. It's a very quick and easy way of converting a two's complement number to decimal. We just treat its most significant bit as having a negative weight. So this table then shows a different, you know, there's four different uh, formats we can use for representing decimal numbers. So we've got a binary pattern on the left here, zero, 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 up to one, 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 one. For an unsigned numbers we've seen before, you just convert them. Uh, just using this place value system and we get the typical 0 up to 15. It's the sign magnitude. You can see for all this case here, for sign magnitude, all these bits here, 0, so we know those are positive numbers. And then the last three bits just give us the magnitude, so we've just got 0 up to 7. And then all the numbers shown here have got a 1. Is the most significant bit, so the sign bit is a one, what tells them they're negative. And then we've got a magnitude, which we end up with a, with a negative number. So we could spell, we could put the zero here just to kind of labor the point. But you can see now for sign magnitude, we've got two representations for zero so a positive zero, negative zero, what's not ideal. For one's complement, you know, <coughs> um, again, it's similar in the fact that. This most significant bit 
here is zero, so you know these are positive numbers. So you have a group of positive numbers and the magnitude is just given by these three bits. But for one's complement, you know, when it's negative, so when we've got a sine bit of one, we know the negative numbers, so all this group here are negative. But now when we look at the magnitude, we do the inverse. So for this one, so it's zero, 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 that's gonna be one, one, one. And we know that that gives us probably minus seven. So let's say for this one, we just invert those bits. So it'll be one, one, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, and so on. So you end up, you know, the order is reversed. So we've got zero up to seven, and then we've got minus seven back to zero for one's complement. But you can see again, in this situation, you do end up with you know, two representations for zero, what's not really ideal. And that's solved by using this concept of two's complement numbers. So again, in all, so you can see actually in all, all four cases, the positive numbers are all represented the same way. So when you've got a zero in your sign bit, that's a positive number. And it's the same for all of them. But now for two's complement, when it's negative, again, we look at this situation, we've got a one in the sign bit. That's obviously a negative number. And then we can just do this quick method of converting that to decimal. So we just treat this column as being worth, this fourth column as being worth minus eight. So that's a, this is a one column, a two column, and a four column. So we can just convert each of those three final patterns to the decimal digit and end up with these here. So you can see in this situation, we go from zero up to seven, then we jump round to minus eight, and minus seven, minus six, minus five back up to minus one, you can see in this situation we've only got the one representation of zero.